about two months or so ago, we talked about SummerSlam for the WWE and how, you know, I thought things were going to play out. We're now shift over, you know, it's been about two months we had Extreme Rules and everything like that. And I'll go a little bit over Extreme Rules too because there are some matches that do have to do with Extreme Rules. You know, and plus some other thoughts as well from that. But now we shift to Saudi Arabia, the Blood Money pay-per-view. Well, one of them anyway, because WWE likes to hold two there in, you know, every year. You know. And this time around, Crown Jewel is shaping up to be something big. Something crazy. Like, this card is stacked. I am beyond surprised this card is really stacked the way it is. Like, I did not expect this, and here we are. I mean, I thought I was going to do Survivor Series this year, but I guess not. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, again, like I said, you know, in my October update a couple weeks back, I don't think I'm going to be doing anything involving Survivor Series, so this will be it for the year as far as WWE goes, you know, so. Um... Basically, what I have, you know, what I've gathered, what I'm thinking, mostly my thoughts and my predictions here, you know, is that this is going to be one hell of a pay-per-view. It's going to be one hell of a pay-per-view. I'm glad things have actually worked out for once because it felt like SummerSlam didn't really work out too well. And, I mean, there were some things at SummerSlam that just did not work out. There were some things in Extreme Rules that were just perplexing, you know, and... I but this, this right here, you know, for a pay-per-view that has garnered so much criticism, this might work out. This might work out real well. We start with the Universal Champion. Of course, you know, Roman Reigns has been leading the charge for WWE for the past year now. Over the past year. He defended his title against Finn Balor um, just last month. And, you know, he retained the title at SummerSlam. But then, guess who? Looking like looking like um, a lumberjack out there, you know, like a literal lumberjack, brought Lesnar, then came back and said, "Hey, I want that title. Let me go back and let me, let me take my baby back home with me. Let me take my other baby back home with me. The Universal Championship, yeah. And I gotta tell you, it's intriguing as hell with the way Paul Heyman, you know, has been. You know, you know, Paul Heyman's a rat, so you know." This man might be working, might be working against Roman Reigns. He might be working with Brock Lesnar. We'll see what in the world happens, you know, because Brock is now being portrayed as, you know, a, you know, as a little baby face, you know, not unlike his initial, you know, Suplex City run. And I think this might work out. I think this might work out well. I don't think Reigns is going to lose the title here, though. Again, I, I'm still predicting that it'll be WrestleMania that he'll lose it. You know, I'm still predicting that. You know, in April, or, or is it March? I don't, I don't remember what the actual date is. We'll talk about that date when we get to that date. But you know, I don't think he's going to lose the title here. And you know, with the way with the way things have been, you know, for Roman, like this is this is going to be continue to generate, you know, the heat, the. Um, the speculation, the fan reactions, and everything like that—it's just going to be good stuff, you know, for him. I'm telling you that right now. Also, at Summer, I mean, not at SummerSlam, at Crown Jewel, we have Bianca Belair, Sasha Banks, and Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch came back at SummerSlam, and it, to my disgust, to a lot of people's disgust, she beat Bianca Belair in 26 seconds to get the SmackDown Women's Championship back. And then not only did we get robbed of a great match, Extreme Rules and stuff like that, because Sasha Banks came back, you know, because she was supposed to face Bianca at SummerSlam, you know, for the second match, you know, second match up between the two of them. Again, all hype for that. All, I was all hype for that. And now we're going to get a triple threat. I, I can't say, you know, I can't say that this really works out completely well. I mean, it, I mean, Becky Lynch is now, you know, now she's a heel. And I'll talk about this as well because Becky Lynch got drafted to Raw. Charlotte got drafted to SmackDown. They're 
both these women are probably going to keep their championships. Maybe do a little trade like like um like the Street Profits and New Day did, like last WWE draft, you know. And it's just like I don't, I don't know right now the way the women's division has been with it with the way things have been going, you know. Uh, like there's a lot of top heavy heels. Like Sasha Banks is a heel. Bailey's you know, the, the, the four horse women are pretty much all heels right now, and nobody is really making a name for themselves, you know, aside from Bel Air right now. So, you know, nobody's really making a good name for themselves. I mean, I know we got Alexa Bliss, but I mean, you know, after all that nonsense, the extreme rules with um, with her Bray Wyatt s character falling, going, finally probably going down the drain. I, I genuinely don't know what's going to happen with the women's roster. I mean, very talented roster. And speaking of this talented roster of women, the Queen's Crown, which is the equivalent to the King of the Ring, probably got put together at the last minute because of the way things have gone with that. And, um, you know, I'm not going to call this woman by her WWE name. You know, it'll be Selena Vega versus Piper. Nevin. I'm not calling her dual drop because, I mean, you know, that's that's not, uh, I, I'm not even sure, you know, why WWE came up with that name again. You know, I mean, these are two talented wrestlers right here, you know, Selena Vega and, and, and Dewdrop. Drop, you know, very talented wrestlers, both of them, you know, and the Queen's Crown got, you know, really got put together, honestly, I think it got put together in the last minute. You know, Shayna Baszler's also been lurking around, you know, being a top trying to, you know, reestablish herself after the, the disastrous team up with Nia Jax and how that turned out, you know. I mean, again, why we even still have, you know, tag team championships for women, you know, you know, women's tag team championships when there's really not enough teams when there's really not enough, you know, people to go around to make teams that make sense. Uh, whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll save that for another time. But yeah, the Queen's Crown, you know, a lot of people didn't expect, you know, that type of matchup to be to be for the Queen's Crown, but here it is. It is there. It is there. And it it it, it should be an underrated matchup on this card, you know. I don't think a lot of people are gonna be talking about it. I mean again, you know, Piper Nevin with the uh or rather do a drop with the you know, with the upsets, you know, stuff like that. Definitely a talented wrestler. The last time I talked, but the last time I talked about her, you know, I think I kind of dissed her. Um, that was my bad. At, at, I looked her up afterwards and stuff like that, and I was very disappointed in myself for, you know, you know, kind of discrediting her. Um, that's unfortunate for me. Stupid by me. Um, again, you know, talented wrestler. You know, it, it's a sh it's a shame that you know we're doing this in Saudi Arabia, though, know, because Saudi Arabia, you know, has has really, has, uh, uh, there's also you know the whole Saudi Arabia factor with you know women's wrestling. You know it's gonna it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be really really hard. Um, but I am glad that the King of the Ring is coming back. You know, but I mean I'd rather just have a whole King of the Ring pay per view instead. But whatever, you know, whatever, you know. Speaking of King of Ring, you know, this this King of Ring final that came down to it, Finn Balor, Xavier Woods. Xavier Woods, you know, has had some good momentum in the fact that he's beaten a lot of beaten a lot of really top heavy guys, you know, in the past year or so. And I'm really surprised at this. I'm really surprised, you know, in all honesty. I mean, he beat Bobby Lashley at least once. You know, I mean things have just been things have just been weird. For Finn Balor, on the other hand, things Things could not have went more disastrous than they went at Extreme Rules. The only Extreme Rules match on that card, him against Roman Reigns, and it ended in such a stupid way. We're talking, trying to invoke, the Vince was trying to invoke the supernatural and stuff like that and just didn't work out. Then the ring rope popped, and thus that's how Balor lost. I mean, it was just not, it was just not a good ending for him. Maybe, maybe this will help get some of his momentum back, but I, I doubt it, because, I mean, you know, he's another one of these guys that have just been wasted, you know, these past couple years, another one of these guys that just not had the opportunities there, so, I mean, it is what it is there, um, okay, WWE Championship, Big E, 
been the champion for, you know, just, he hasn't been the champion for very, very long. You know, he just won it, like, not even two months ago. Not, it was after SummerSlam that he won it. Um, and he's taking on Drew McIntyre, who is finally back in the WWE Championship picture. You know, now that Bobby Lashley's not the champion anymore, we'll talk about him in a minute. Um, now, you know, McIntyre can challenge Big E, but Drew McIntyre is one of those guys that got drafted to SmackDown, presumably. Maybe they challenge Roman Reigns for a while, you know, until, you know, until WrestleMania, you know. Um, I'm not sure how to feel about this matchup. It's going to be a fun one. Definitely another underrated matchup, you know, on this card. Definitely another one. It's really underrated uh, in all seriousness. Um, Goldberg, Oldberg. Botchberg. No, I'm just I'm just messing with y'all. I, I made that last one up myself. Goldberg versus Bobby Lashley in a no holds barred bat match. Well, I can't speak today. Um, now this stems from you know Goldberg basically you know kayfabe injury at SummerSlam, in which you know appears he got his leg hurt. Even though you know you know for a 50 plus year old man, I. I don't doubt that in, at all that he got his leg hurt. You know, this man can't last more than five minutes of the match. You know, you know, there's a lot of minute men out there. I don't know, what, I don't know, y'all are. I know there's a lot of minute men out there probably watching this video. Yeah, you last just as long as Goldberg does in a match. I'm sorry, <laughs> um, but yeah, probably me too. Shit, I don't, I don't know, um, but you know. Yeah, this matchup is just, I, I don't know, I don't know what to feel, because, I mean, I didn't want this matchup in the first place. You all know what I wanted, and a lot of people still want this matchup. Like, why haven't we got Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley yet? Like, it, this is definitely the time, but no, gotta shove Goldberg in his face. So, again, I, I just don't know how to feel about this match. Like, Bobby Lashley didn't attack, you know, accidentally attacked, you know, Goldberg's son after the match, you know. That got worked in, so now there's a little bit more of a stipulation to it, you know, a little bit more personal. But again, I just don't really care. I don't care. This match is probably going to be like two to five minutes. We're all going to be minute men, you know. By the, you know, by the time you find your favorite video on the internet sites, you know that this match is going to be over. By the time you get that nut, it's going to be over. So you know, it just is what it is. There, man. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care about this match. I don't care at all. Um, Mansoor versus Mustafa Ali. This is a match that got added just recently. You know, I don't really, I don't really care for this one either. You know, not even gonna lie to you. I know Mansoor is a native Saudi Arabian, but that's about the only relevancy that this matchup has. Because aside from that, you know, Mustafa Ali has been, you know, like this mid carter who really has had no momentum. And, you know, this matchup really doesn't need to exist, but it exists probably for the Saudi Arabia crowd. That's probably the only reason why it exists, you know. I mean, it's not even a good feud, in all honesty. I don't even know what it's about. It's, it's like a feud over pro probably nothing significant at all. Um, I think I've talked about, you know, that the yeah, Raw Tag Team Championships are going to be defended at this pay-per-view. You know, Big Almost and AJ Styles are going to go up against Randy Orton and Riddle, RK Bro, one of the weirdest tag teams that I've ever seen in my entire life. You know, this one's going to be a definitely an underrated type match here as well. I don't know, I don't know where these matches are going to place up and how they're going to open, you know, hopefully, you know. This baby is going to be a nice, good one, you know. Again, you know, definitely another underrated matchup. It's always good to have a tag team matchup on the card. Um, yeah, I don't really have any thoughts about this because, I mean, you know, RK Bro just won the tag team titles for the Raw tag team titles not even a couple months ago themselves, you know. So, um, you know, definitely an underrated matchup, you know. Almost an AJ Styles looking to get the tag team titles back. It's, it's very simple, you know. No need for any, you know, nonsense. It's a very simple cut and paste type story. But this right here, this last matchup here, definitely going to be, you know, the probably the, I'd say the second biggest match of the night. You know, you know, 
sorry about you know the SmackDown Women's Championship, but this one right here is gonna be the biggest matchup of the night. One of the biggest matchups of the night. You know, SmackDown once again dominates this card as it has been for the longest time. You know, it seems with the WWE just straight up dominating the card with great feuds and stuff like that. Edge versus Seth Rollins, Part Three in the trilogy, Hell in a Cell. Whew, boy, this one. Yeah, you know Rollins is still mad about what what has been happening to him. You know, like he's still mad about the opportunity that Edge got over him. You know, I, I don't blame the guy. You know, I don't blame the guy. You know, this one, this one right here, this one's personal. This one's gonna be hard hitting. This one's gonna be heavy. It's gonna be a lot of emotions. Gonna be uh, maybe some blood too. You know, this one, this one right here is gonna hit. It's gonna hit all the right spots gonna be one hell of a matchup so you know you so you know you got a couple of goodies you know you got a couple of real good matchups on this card potentially you know you got you got some underrated sleepers and then you got a couple of bad matches thrown in typical yeah, not not as typical as a WWE card as you know ex you expect but I mean definitely a top heavy card with Smackdown and stuff like that and remember this pay-per-view takes place on Thursday so you know it'll be Thursday 11 a.m. Central, that's where I live. You know, I live in the Central Time Zone, best time zone, 12 Eastern, and like, I don't know, I don't know what the time is in like Saudi Arabia, but wherever, if there is a Saudi Arabia viewer out there who's probably angry at me for you know making disparaging comments about your country, because I mean, I mean, come on, you know, I'm not wrong, I'm not wrong, I'm sorry. I mean, America's trash too, but I'm not sorry, you know, about Saudi Arabia. I'm not sorry. I'm not going to be sorry about this pay per view. I'm not going to be sorry about this pay per view. It was just a money grab. Uh, yeah, this one's going to be. This one's going to be good. This one's going to be a good one. I, I, I hope so. I really, really hope so because Extreme Rules had some weird moments in it that I didn't like. SummerSlam had some moments too where I just did not like it. I mean, for the most part this year, the WWE has been doing a pretty good job with their pay-per-views. A pretty good job, not a great job. It's like 6, 7 out of 10 type stuff here with the WWE. So, you know, it is what it is there. Let's do this, everybody. Let's get in the crown jewel. Let's get out of crown jewel, you know, safe and sound. Hopefully everybody, you know, safe and sound at the end, you know, and I mean, things are going to go fine. Man. Man. Whew. All right, everybody. That's it. That's all I got to say. I'll see you all on Saturday night. Saturday night, college football recap. That'll do it. You know, you know, you all know what to do. Like, share, comment, subscribe, yada yada yada. Click the notification bell. Blah 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 blah. All that stuff. All that good stuff. You know. See ya. Oh wait, I forgot about the NFL recap. I mean, not the recap, the uh, the preview. Yeah, that'll be Thursday. Why am I talking about? Oh, never mind. Forget it. You know when this video is coming. This one's coming on Wednesday. This one's this right here is coming on Wednesday. NFL recap. If a preview coming Thursday, okay? <laughs> uh, I'm stupid. My bad.